Finally, fear of intimacy with the opposite sex. Many of these boys are over-identified with a mother, and they internalize that femininity. The girls may be over-identified with a father and internalize his masculinity. Many of these women have been sexually violated or other ways abused by men. So they're sick of being hurt, and they turn to women for their affectional needs. And finally, the third pillar. I call this not a gay condition, brothers and sisters. It's a sad condition. A same-sex attachment disorder. Because it's a need for bonding, secure attachment, and connection that never happens sufficiently. They feel perhaps disconnected from the same gender parent on a very deep level. They feel disconnected perhaps from same gender peers. When that happens, they reject their own gender and they become detached from who they are. And then they're going to seek that in the arms of other men for the guys, women for the girls, the rest of their lives, trying to make up for that deficit. But again, sex will thwart the fulfillment of those deep and profound emotional and psychological needs. This chart I know is probably too small for you to read. It's the 10 potential causes of, for the development of creating SSA in any man or woman. And here, let me show it to you this way. It's a lot easier. That's the chart that's in the book, the other chart. And it would take me too long to go into this because I want to leave a few minutes now for Q&A. So heredity, things we inherit from our families, temperament, hypersensitive. Most of these men and women are extremely sensitive. And that's why I said parents don't cause this, because the boys do not often feel accepted by their dads. My father was like, I grew up in Philly, Philadelphia. We used to have the Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles, and the Philadelphia Phillies over for picnics. I grew up with breathing sports. It was not my thing. <laughs> I was an artist, I was a dancer and a musician, and that didn't bode well with my father's nature. So we didn't, it was a mismatch, but you know something that's a lie too. My father had to kill his sensitivity with the culture and community he grew up in. And he was very at odds with me because to love me was something that he never got to accept within himself. I mean, talking about SSA, I'm talking about sensitivity. Because mm -hmm. I know my crusty father who was at Iwo Jima when they put up the flag. That was his marine platoon. Mm -hmm. My you know, formidable father um, was so wounded by so many experiences of his life. But that generation was not allowed to express softness to the man. It was, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you, you just don't do it. Mm -hmm. Feelings. No, the only feelings men were allowed was anger. And yeah. he was an expert and a PhD in that. So temperaments are often mismatched. Heteroemotional wounding, that's the daughter uh, with the father, the son with the mother, usually a close alliance that way. And then the homoemotional wounding, the son not well bonding with dad, the daughter with <coughs> mother. Sibling wounds, family dynamics, there can be lots of sibling hurts or with relatives. It's too much to go into. Body image wounds. I've worked with so many men who are bodybuilders. These like military guys. I have, I've, you know, I'm in the D.C. area. Lots of military. They hate themselves because they never bonded. So no matter how much they build themselves up or blow themselves up, they still have this sense of I'm inadequate in their soul. Mm -hmm. Sexual abuse. High percentage of this population in my clientele over the last twenty something years. I say about fifty percent. Some other literature says it's higher. Now we know all children who are sexually abused will not develop SSA. There cannot just be one variable that creates this. It's got to be a constellation of several of them. Never one thing alone, but many. Home, but they have this, and perpetrators know they, can, they have antennae, and they know who to get. They'll see the child with the hungry eyes and they will perpetrate. And abuse means first there's an emotional alliance, and then they violate the child. And every perpetrator was once a, a victim of sexual abuse, mm -hmm. and they never reconciled it. It just continues. 
homosocial wounds, that's boys with boys. Guys don't feel like they fit in. A lot of these guys feel more comfortable with girls. Girls don't feel comfortable with girls. A lot of them hang out, feel more comfortable with guys. Cultural wounding, I say today, with this uh, homosexual mythology, uh, imbuing them with this ridiculous notion that born this way and cannot change, which again is not scientifically valid or scripturally. And then other factors in the family, divorce, death, um, even religion can be very terribly punishing to people with SSA. Um, I've taught a lot of pastors, so I came up with this equation because I just couldn't believe how many of them came into the training thinking they're born this way, or the devil made them do it. That's what so many pastors came into the training thinking. So I came up with this equation to nullify that uh, false theory. Heredity, as I told you in the ten causes, yes, there might be sin, we're born with, not might be, we're born with sin nature. Also, we're born with you know, unresolved family issues. Second is temperament, this very sensitive child, plus we see gender non-conforming behaviors, here, you hear about the sissy boy or the masculine girl. And then people in the families or the pastors observe that and say, aha, they're born this way. No. They're born that way, you know why? It's a gift to the lineage. We look at the psychological profile of these children, father-son, father-son, father-son detachment over mm -hmm. many generations till you develop this yeah. very effeminate boy. And you know what that boy is? A gift to heal the rift yeah. of all that broken father-son bonding that never occurred. If that son will bond with that boy and the other relatives and men get around him, 100% literature, research shows he comes out straight every single yeah. time. Yeah. The mm -hmm. same with the daughter, mother, daughter, mother, daughter, mother, daughter, you develop this masculinized girl because of all the wounding, why from men, and then they're very hurt. And this girl is an opportunity to heal the whole feminine lineage if the mother will do the right things and get the support around that girl. So we have these two variables, heredity and temperament. Those two together may be a predisposition or a predilection for SSA, but not a predetermination. Why? Because of the eight other variables that we can work with. So when we help heal the same and opposite sex relationships in the family, or that adult will heal those relationships in his or her life, and all these other factors dealing with the sex abuse and the peer wounding, 100% they will come out straight. So, whether the devil made them do it, <laughs> or there's some predispositioning because of sensitivity, or lineage brokenness, it can all be reconciled. And we know with him, all things, all things, not just some of them, <laughs> very unequivocally, all things are possible. Checked out the battery. I'm writing a new book, and I'm going to use the word in the title because that's what's publicly known, Loving Gays the Right Way. And the subtitle is The Other Side of Tolerance. And I'm doing one chapter, Why I Believe Their SSA, and I'm using very public, high-profile people. Greg Luginis, Rosie O'Donnell, former NBA player John Amici, Melissa Etheridge, these, when you go into, I'm using their words, and into these ten causes, it's clinical why each one of them has SSA. It's just so predictable, and I'm going to use the chart and show all the variables that they have in common, and say, born that way, ha! <laughs> it's very predictable. Okay, so let me finish up with the healing process, and then I'll take a few questions. So here's some of the keys to the kingdom of freedom. The root causes are the teachers of why an individual has SSA. There are always reasons. Somebody comes in my office, I have my palette of colors of causation, and it's so easy to see, and that will give us the treatment plan for healing. Secondly, marriage is never the solution for anybody who has SSA. Why? Because a man must first feel like a guy with the guys before he can be with a woman successfully. And a woman must feel her femininity and be comfortable in the world of women before she can be successful with the male. So first there has to be same gender healing. <clears throat> Those needs must be met.
to flagellate oneself, to try to pray this away, is the worst, most worst punishing thing anybody could say. Pray it and God will take it away. No, he won't, because he doesn't want that person to be suffering a whole lifetime. Those needs must be fulfilled. You heard Doug's testimony in the presence of loving, sympathetic uh, witnesses. Men for men, women for women. Formula for change. Number one, personal motivation. Now, I wrote the Gay Children's Straight Parents book for the family member, How to Bring Kids Out of This. And I have been successful with so many of these families with the gay identified uh, men and women bringing them out of it, even though they didn't want to change. So that's going to be for tomorrow morning, how to do that. But this is the formula for those who want change, is motivation. Effective treatment. It's very important because there's many therapists and, forgive me, uh, ministries who don't know how to really well help those who want to endeavor this journey. I've heard of, so I've done lots of media and I've uh, been on shows with these former, they are called them ex-ex-gays, who have tried ministries and counseling, and they really prayed hard and worked hard, and it never worked. And my heart goes out to them to say, you didn't get the right kind of help. Because if anybody's in therapy, and three months, three months is the benchmark. If you're not beginning to feel better in three months, leave very quickly and say thank you, no thank you. Because change should begin to happen from the get-go. I'm not going to say it's out the window. No, not at all. It takes years. How long does this therapy work? For my client's average, I'd say one and a half to three years. Depends on the severity of the wounding and also the tenacity of the individual, how much they want to invest. And I'm not talking financially, I'm talking about emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Third, what was created in broken relationships must be healed in healthy relationships. So the support of others is critical. It takes a community to raise and heal a child, no matter how old they are. And number four, the love of God. With that formula, change is certain. So these are four aspects of healing for the therapist in the crowd. The first stage I use is a lot of behavioral approaches. Changing behavior, as Doug was alluding to, I talk about playgrounds, playmates, playthings. You can't keep hanging there because it's just going to keep numbing the system. Second then is cognitive work, and that's renewal of the mind. I'm gonna give some scripture when I go into the four stages tomorrow afternoon. And then third is healing those wounds. That's the grieving time. Now, we don't start therapy with that. That's stage three. I'll show you in a moment. That's when you go back and do the emotional surgery of releasing the pain. And four, we release in the presence of people who can love us purely and healthy and correctly as God would love us. To be Jesus with skin for our brothers and sisters. That's why I'm standing here today. I would be dead if it weren't for Peter, Philip, and Russell, who loved me through my hell into life. So the first stage, I call it transitioning. Second stage, grounding. Third is, uh, and that's the behavioral cognitive, and then the psychodynamic men healing the man wounds, and girls healing the girl wounds. And finally, men need to heal with women, the mother issue or other women issues, and women heal the male issues. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm gonna go in more in depth into these four stages. So finally, in conclusion, people are not born this way, no one chooses it, change is possible. And these are some of the books that I've used. One of them is Arthur's great <coughs> book, that's on the back table there. And thank you very much. Five minutes for some Q and A. Does anybody have a question? No, thank you. We're, yeah, where do we start? I know I covered a huge amount of material in a very short time, um, and tomorrow I'm going to go into more depth of all of that, um, and it's all in in, in the resources.